forever young. So make sure you sign up for that. That's about to launch. Like, you, you don't want to miss that. It's 55 and over. Listen, it's robust. It's amazing. You want to sign up for that, all right? You're 55 and over. All right. <laughs> so the next one is the dance ministry. We're bringing the dance Woo! ministry back. Father, let's raise those offerings up unto 
the Lord. Oh God, I just thank you and praise you right now. Father, we thank you for all the offerings, the giving, the tithe. God, we you're, you're greater than a tithe. The tithe is 10%. But well, we're reminded of the poor woman who gave all. At this moment, God, what we choose to give you right now, God, is our very best. It's our all. And God, we ask that you would receive it out of our hearts. God, we glorify your name. And this is just a small token of our appreciation towards you. So we ask that you would receive it as a sweet aroma. In Jesus' name, God, we glorify you right now. God, we ask that you would bless all those that are giving today. You pour back into their bank accounts, into their hearts, into their mind, in their marriage. Pour back into their energy and their courage. Lord, Lord, pour back, God, into their time. Lord, pour back into them, the, the children that they are forgiven. Pour back into them, God. Let them know that they are wealthy, Lord, that they're more than a conqueror. Oh, God, remind us that who we belong to, God, in this token of giving, that we belong to you and no one else. God, we glorify you. We thank you for what you are about to do and what you're doing. But we just honor you with our giving. And if we're somebody, God, that isn't able to give today, God, we honor you still with our, with, in our prayer, in our time, in our, in our coming, in our going. We still honor you. But we ask you, well, the next time there's an opportunity to give, that you put it on our heart to give unto your ministry. We glorify your name. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God is going to bless us with a song. And from that moment on, the next words you will be hearing is from the words of Christ Jesus. My prayers that your hearts and your minds are open to really receive something from God today. In Jesus' name.
It's not about what you think it's about. It's really just about your submission and your obedience to the things of God. And he will show up for you every single time. So these tears I have are not because I'm nervous and it's not because I'm scared, but it's because God showed up for me in this moment. Oh, thank you, God. So Pastor faked y'all off and he was right. <laughs> thank you. We're going to go to Mark chapter 5. Before I read, I just want to give honor to God. And not for any religious reasons, but because without him, I am unworthy to mount this platform. I am unworthy to say anything to anybody. But I give him honor because he loved me when I was unlovable. He loved me when I didn't love myself. And he still graces me in every moment. So for that, I give him honor. I honor the man and woman of God of this house, Pastor Jeff and Lady Ariel. What you all don't know is the summer they came, and they said, we're going to be a task for you. Many of you all know I've had a hard way to go with some things. And he said, we're going to cast you. That means like a broken bone. We're just going to hold you in that space and allow God to just heal those broken areas. So I thank you for being a pastor and the first lady that casted me in my broken space and loved me beyond what you saw. Hallelujah. And I definitely honor my husband because you do. Amen. <laughs> Did I do that right? Yes. All right, now let's get to the text. All right, cool. All right, Mark chapter 5, let's drop down to verse 25. And so this is a familiar passage of scripture that I'm going to read. So I ask that you guys not tune out because you already know it. Sometimes we can do that. And if you're a guy, I mean, like this message is focused on a woman. So I ask that you kind of like not tap out either, right? So it's something for everybody. That's how the word of God is. Yes. So Mark chapter 5, verse 25, says, Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and has suffered many things from many physicians. She has spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. Let that sink in. You spend everything you have on a doctor trying to fix a problem, and they leave you broke on, and worse than what you were when you first started on. But when she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately, the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus immediately, so we have two things immediately happening. We have immediate transactions happening. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around to the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, don't you see the multitude? And you ask, who touched you? And he looked around to see her. So in the multitude, he already knew who he was looking for. The Bible says he looked around to see her who had done the thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. So if I had to title this message, I would title it that connections are risky business. And if I want to make a point, let me give you this point early. The point is, your risk to be vulnerable and make an authentic faith connection with the Father will cause an interruption on his journey. Let me say that again. Your risk to be vulnerable and make an authentic faith connection with the Father will cause an interruption on his journey. Now, let's, let's take this text from the top. Because the Bible says that she was a certain woman. Now let's understand. Y'all can sit down. I'm sorry. 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 Y'all, this is my first time. Y'all can stay on the I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Grace me a little bit. Grace me. Now, before we get into the text, let me help you guys understand what's going on. Because we are a Western civilization, right? Western culture means that we look at life from the space of who am I? How does this affect me? What do I want? What do I think? When you log on Facebook, it says, what do you think today? So everything in the Western culture is about me. Yes. How does this make me feel? Do I like you? Do I like it? Do I like that? Blah, 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 blah. But the Bible was not written from a Western cultural perspective. The Bible was written from an Eastern cultural perspective. 
Eastern culture don't care about the individual. The individual has to care about the whole. And in this dispensation in time, Jesus had not yet gone to the cross. The veil had not been torn in two. So the only way to get to the Father was through the temple. I'm going to get to that. Now, let me explain something a little bit more. In Jewish culture, they are also uh, governed by Jewish leadership. And Jewish leadership in the church created these laws. And laws created culture. So the law of this day and time says that when a woman was bleeding, she was called ceremonially unclean. When you are unclean, you are in time to You are not unclean and then allowed to hang out with the masculine. Now, there are two different types of bleeding that a woman could experience in this space. One type of bleeding is the kind that happens every single month. We know about that. Come on, it's the one that happens when you get invited to the pool party. Y'all know that. <laughs> it don't come no other time unless it's something you gotta do. All white party, boom, she gonna show up. Pool party, hey. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? But that's the one type of uh, blood flow that a woman can have. The other one is something called Zaba. And Zaba was an ongoing, irregular blood flow that didn't stop. Now, the consequences for the first one was that you had your flow and you wait in time out for seven days. After that, you take a bath, you're now ceremonially, you're ceremonially clean, and now you can come back into the fold, okay? But during that time, anything you touched, anything you sat on, anything you laid on, was unclean, and nobody else could touch your bath again. Now, I want you all to imagine that for 12 years, they have told you that you are unclean. Don't touch nobody, don't talk to nobody, don't be in the presence of nobody, don't accidentally do nothing. We've been in the middle of a pandemic for almost two years. And let me tell you something, as a mental health therapist, the first year, the number of abuse in the home, the number of divorces that happened, the number of things that happened in the space of isolation for one year was crazy. But I want you all to imagine that you are this woman, and for 12 years, you were told, don't be around me. You are not good enough. Oh, you can't touch me. Because if she even touched you, you are now ceremonially unclean. Now what's worse than that is that when you are in a place of Zaba, you cannot go to the temple, honey. You can't go to church. What? If you go to church and your blood touches the floor, the chair, or anyone who was considered holy, your consequence was death. Come on. There was no litigation, there was no attorney, there was none of that. So for 12 years, I want you to imagine this woman had no connection to God. I told you the veil had not been rent. Jesus had not been nailed to the cross, he had not descended and ascended so that we have a direct connection to the Father. Her connection to God was cut off for 12 years. I didn't say that, that's just what the Bible said. And the Bible said that she was just a certain woman with the issue of blood. That means nobody took the time to even know her name. She had no association. They didn't say her name was Linda, and Linda was bleeding. They said, no, nah, you know, that's that girl over there. No, nah, you know her. I don't know her name. Let me check her Facebook page real quick. You know who she is. That one over there. That one, right? That's who she was. You didn't know that. That's who she was. She was just a certain nameless woman. The Bible attaches themselves to people. Who you are attached to in Jewish culture is everything. What? Isaac, Jacob, and Abraham, right? Jesus, the son of Mary. This person in relationship to that. This mother, the son of so-and-so. So-and-so is married to so-and-so. This one was just a certain woman. Woman. This is a certain woman. That's all she was. And the Bible says, so now we all caught up, right? Now we understand Eastern culture. We understand what's happening in the Jewish culture. We understand where we are in the text. Now that's, what, now that's the way the woman was in the text. Now let me tell you where Jesus was. Now Jesus had started off his ministry to the Jews. And in Mark chapter 4, he had just got finished calming the sea, right? Because the winds and the waves, y'all don't remember the story, right? The winds and the waves was rocking. And he now needs to get ready to start off his ministry. So he's got his disciples with him, and he's like, come on, we're going on over to the Gadarenes. Now I'm at Mark, check, I'm at Mark 5, and I'm at the beginning. This is not the text, I'm just giving y'all background. So when he gets over to the Gadarenes, first he's met with a man who was demonically possessed. The demon bows down to Jesus. Jesus cast out the demon into the pigs. The pigs run off into the water. And the disciples are like, whoo, this demon's bad. They leave him. They come on down Mark chapter 5 a little bit more. Come on, take this journey, because this is what's happening in, in the life of Jesus. Keep in mind, this is the first time that Jesus is now ministering to someone who's not a Jew. This is the first time that he's come to the unclean people. The people the Jews did not think was worthy to even be associated with them. So Jesus is launching his ministry to the unworthy people in Mark chapter 5. So after he leaves the demon-possessed man, then they get off the boat. 
and Aaron. And the Bible says that Jairus comes up to Jesus. And Jairus is a high official in the temple. That means he's one of the leaders. That means what he says go. He's a man of influence and upwards. And he says, but Jesus, my daughter is 12 years old, and she's about to die. But I know if you come and touch her, you can raise her from the dead. So Jesus is like, okay, cool. Let's go do that. Resurrection is easy for me. That's what I did. Take me to where she is. So now, guess what? The people heard that Jesus was in town. So the Bible says that there was a multitude. So when you imagine a multitude, I want you to imagine being in New York. And it's shoulder to shoulder. You Excuse me? That's what the word thronging means. It's, when they said that the multitude was thronging him, it means it was unorderly fashion. And it was a whole bunch of people, they just a multitude. So now they're following Jesus. And on the way, I don't know how this woman heard because I told you she was in isolation. I told you she couldn't nobody talk to her. She didn't have a Twitter. She didn't have an Instagram. She didn't have a Facebook. She didn't have none of that kind of stuff. But somehow this isolated woman who was in time out heard that Jesus was coming. Jobs and gave it everything. They 
hard to anyway with COVID. Come on. We've done it. We've tried and tried and tried many different things. And she said to herself, if I could just, I don't have to hug them. We don't have to talk. Tell me all this. 
to many folks, but somehow, how the hell does she got a connection? Oh, how did she get that connection? She was willing to risk it all for that connection. Who's in the house that is willing to risk your life just for that connection? Well, I'm here to tell you, buddy, it is a blessing assurance. It is a guarantee. If you connect with Jesus, you will live and not die. You will live and not die. It is a blessed assurance. He will take the debt every time. But what about the next time? Every time. Blessed assurance. If I can just have a connection. I need You're tired. You're tired. You're 
you're bored. You're bored with your life. You're tired. You're ready to give up. You, you need to see a therapist because you're ready to take it out. Blessing assurance. He saves every time. If you want to give your life to the Lord, will you come? These towels that these elders are holding represent cleaning up the blood. Ah! Oh! If you're somebody that's bleeding, will you come? If you're bleeding on your job, you're bleeding in your marriage, you're bleeding as a single, but I'm single and I can't stay saved. Single because I keep making the same mistake over and over and over again. I know what that life is like. I'm bleeding. You're single and you're lonely and you, you find all your time on Instagram, Facebook, and all these social media stuff. Finding yourself in the same cycles. Not clean. Y'all know what I mean when I say you ain't clean. You got to shower and repent. Will you come? Will you come? Oh, I pray that the Lord invokes courage in you right now. Because there are some of you all that if you walk out of here today, today, you will spiritually die. You're bleeding. Listen. Do you understand you cannot survive without the blood? Hey, hallelujah. You need the blood of Jesus. And without that blood, you're bleeding out. You're, you're dying. You're walking there. If you need the blood of Jesus, will you come? Don't waste this moment. Don't waste this moment. Thank you, Jesus. Well, put your hands together for those who got courage to get what they need from Jesus. Where you go? It's important for me to talk to somebody to let you remind you that this is not a show. You didn't, what did you come for? What did you come to see? What did you come to see? Did you hear, hear see somebody preach? Did you, do you feel like you're okay because you're inside of a building? God is coming back for a church. He ain't coming back for no building. He's coming back for you. Thank 